Are you ready to think big and act bold? Then you are in the right place. This is Innovative Entrepreneurs, a podcast that will bring you the stories, insights, and tips from some of the most successful and innovative entrepreneurs in the world. I am your host, Erica Bailey, and I am here to help you start, scale, and sustain your own entrepreneurial journey. Let's get started. Today, I'm delighted to have Sherilyn Arnold as our guest. She is a former middle school Spanish teacher turned successful mompreneur who has built several thriving businesses in retail sales and real estate over several decades. She is a six-figure earner, a world traveler, writer, and co-founder of Dear Dreamer, the company that offers empowerment retreats for women who want to pursue their dreams. She is an Amazon best-selling author of The Lines We Draw, a book about setting healthy boundaries. She's passionate about helping women find joy and fulfillment in areas of their life. Sherilyn, thank you for joining us today. We're so excited to have you. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. Wonderful. So let's talk about, you know, your entrepreneurial journey. You were a Spanish teacher. What was your why to make that change and become an entrepreneur? Oh, I, I'm so glad you didn't ask me what my why was to become a Spanish teacher. I thought you were going to ask me that. There was, a, there was no no thought put into that whatsoever. So I woke up after two years. After two years of teaching, I woke up and I was just like, what am I doing? I do love teaching. I love helping people. Um, um, and so, you know, that part of it was good. Um, but what inspired me to make a change was being broke. <laughs> yeah. Up in there. And you end up uh, passing my daughter, Caitlin, off. She's my oldest child, passing her off to my sister every morning so I could go teach other people's kids and make a difference in their life while I missed out on my own child's, you know, life. And uh, yeah, I lasted, I lasted two years and I lasted 10 weeks after having had a baby. And I was just like, and I decided I, I took to my husband, you know, the thought of me staying home. He was a first year school teacher at that time. So I was a second year. He was a first year school teacher. And he was like, we'll, we'll end up on welfare. Like if you quit, because we had bought a home, a couple cars, you know, we had some debt. And I was like, I'd rather be on welfare. If I can be home with my baby, I'd rather be on welfare. But luckily it didn't come to that. And um, I started a business in network marketing okay. and I was highly motivated to make that work. I just had to look at my baby in her little baby swing mm -hmm. and I was highly motivated. So I I am still technically in network marketing, but my I am not spending a lot of time in that business. Mm -hmm. And C Caitlin and I are business partners now shifting our focus onto other things, but it did teach me a lot. Um, I gained a lot of skill and I'm grateful for the experience. I love that you, you know, you said you had to kind of make this leap and it didn't matter. You know, you were jumping into, you know, this black void and it didn't matter to you, you know, if you were going to fail. It sounds like you knew that no matter what, you were going to fail forward if that was the case, right? That, that you had to it. So there was something just in your gut that you knew that this is what you were meant to do. I think I was just so darn miserable. I mean, nothing could be worse that to me than being separated from my child, you know, like, and I was a little bit older by, by, by the standards where I live. Um, I was 28 when I had a baby, my first baby, and I was a career woman, you know, like I had a degree and a career and my own money. And I just was like, and my sister will watch my baby because I just don't have time for that. I did not anticipate how much love I would feel for that child and how how horrible the separation was for me. It's not like that for everyone, but for me, I would have rather done, tried anything than what I was doing. I was the same way. And so that was our why, you know, um, the realist, we were, I just got my master's degree. Um, the real estate market just crashed in Arizona. There was, you know, not a lot of options for us. So we're like, you know what, we're just going to start our own business. And, you know, it's been 
15 years that we've been doing this. And that entire time I got to be there, you know, by my kids' sides in the morning, making breakfast. You know what I mean? I could be at every football practice or every game yeah. because yeah. I made my life by design, right? I, I, you know, and that's kind of the benefit of being an entrepreneur. You know, if you run your business right, you, yeah. you know, you can, you can have that life that you are, you know, that you're trying to build or that you dream of. And so that was my why for me is being home, being with those kids, being able to whatever, they were homesick. I could be by their side on the couch, you know? So me, that, yeah. that was our why, is our family. And I uh, love, I love that. I love important. that. Yeah, I think that's the most important. So what, it, you went into network marketing. Talk to me about that. All right. So I don't think I'm allowed to say the name of the company that I went okay. into. But um, yes, I went into network marketing because mind you, um, there was no internet. So I'm, I'm 53. Um, hopefully I don't look 53, but you know, there was no internet. People were just, there, there kind of was like people were just messing around with emails. Like that, they were like the coolest thing. So if I wasn't going to walk into a classroom physically and teach, um, I could not use my degree, yeah. but I was, but I was a highly educated woman and I had, I had standards, you know, for myself. And so, um, Going into a network marketing business made sense to me because I could use the skills and the education that I already had. Mm -hmm. and, and I went looking for I went looking for the business that paid me the highest commission. There you go. And, mm -hmm. and can I tell you that that has been a two-edged sword because I have never been passionate about the business. Does that make sense? Like yeah. I've I've never really been all in as far as like the products and you know like none of it. I just for me I had to make a certain income so that I could have the freedom and flexibility that I needed um, to help pay the bills but still be with my kids. And so it did it did fulfill me in that way. But I think I I probably stayed far too long um, in it when I really had outgrown it. So yeah, that's my, that's my experience. That's pretty amazing. Okay. So let's talk about Dear Dreamer, right? Like what inspired you and your daughter to create this business? And, you know, what is your mission and, and vision for this business? Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. So when I wanted to have a career shift, I, I just realized, you know, being in my 50s, my life is well over, well over halfway done. And I was not truly fulfilled because I had not, I was not working in my passion. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like, you know, the definition of happiness is finding something you're passionate about and getting paid to do it and being able to share it with other people. Yeah. So I yeah. just, I was really looking for something like that. And I didn't just like stop the, the network marketing business to dive into a new company because ha having been in my business, my network marketing business for 30 years, I am, I'm already a six figure earner there because if you just stick with network marketing that long, you're going to figure some stuff out, your groups, yeah. gonna grow, you know, so I couldn't just like dump that. So Caitlin and I actually started this kind of little secret real estate investing thing. Okay. So that we could start Dear Dreamer and, and I could stop, really stop participating in the network marketing business. So, um, yes, we are. So, so I've got two businesses now that are doing six figures and Dear Dreamer is just our love child. You know what I mean? Like it's our thing that we just, we don't even care. We don't even care if, if it makes money. I know that it will because we don't care. You know, when we're not, we're, when you don't pursue money, it just chases you down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we have had the opportunity to start traveling all over the world. Like she quit her job to come work with me and we can go anywhere, anytime. So we've been to like seven countries in the last five years. And, you know, we really can just go. So I was telling her, why don't we take ladies? Why don't we take ladies with us that don't have this opportunity? Like maybe they're Maybe they're just scared to travel on their own or they can't 
because maybe they're widowed or single or divorced or maybe they just want to come be with us. You know, let's our, our husbands have, you know, nine to fives. So they can never go with us. They can like once a year. So first it started out as we're going to travel the world. But Kate, Caitlin and I are not happy unless we're taking other women along with us. And that's one thing that I loved about my network marketing business is figuring something out and then grabbing as many women as you can and just saying, come, let me show you this. Come do this. It's something about us we feel drawn and led to do is just helping other people have extraordinary experiences, but also help them to see their worth and help them to understand what they're capable of. So when we are traveling, we'll be taking women along with us. And then if they want to pick our brains, they can. If they want to sleep all day because they're a mother of 10 and they just want to come get away and have a reprieve, you know, they don't need to have coaching by us, but we're going to take them away, let them step out of their life and just let them be with us because it's not going to be fun for us otherwise. But it, it's been really hard to nail down. What is your purpose for Dear Dreamer? It's to like travel the world and build up women at the same time. It's what we want to do. Our two loves married together. So. so you want to empower women through cultural experiences. Yeah. Yep. Through dreamy retreats. Dreamy retreats. I absolutely yep. love that. Absolutely <laughs> love that. That is fantastic. I love how you've taken, you finally found that, that passion, right? Like you worked your tail off, obviously, to get where you are today, but you finally found that passion. Um, and I can see it on your face. I can, you know, hear it when you talk about it. So I have a feeling that you ladies are going to go far with this. You know, I, I, I feel like it too. It's, it's contagious when you're so passionate about something. So yeah, thank you. Thank you for your vote of confidence. And, <laughs> and I feel like it will, it will do just fine. Oh. Yeah. I'm just, I'm excited. I actually want to, want to join you. So we'll, we'll definitely have to do that. Okay. So let's talk about the obstacles and opportunities for, you know, women in your fifties who maybe want to switch careers or launch a new business. What would you think, or how would you respond to that? Well, I'm in the middle of it now. So I'll just tell you the, like the things I'm going through. You create a lot of relationships in your career when you've been in it that long. You know, you create a lot of relationships that really you have to realize are they are contingent upon you participating in that career. You're going to have some friendships that will always last through time. But when you meet people in a certain organization or you were brought together because of a certain job or career, the relationship is really contingent on that. So I'm facing the dissolving of some of those um, relationships that I um, have enjoyed, but I realize that I will be making new ones yes. and it, and it will be okay because I, I feel it like all the way down in my bones that this is my true path. And so it will be okay. It will be okay. It's, yeah, but it is that leap again. But it sounds like this time you actually have a vision of what you're leaping into. Um, and yep. you know, that is a lot easier to do, um, especially because you know what you're what you're landing in, right? So it's like you've actually created this vision of of your future. You manifested it and now you're jumping in with both feet ready to take, you know, take that over. So I absolutely love that. You see the Thank difference you. the leap into the unknown and the leap into the the clear vision, you know, and yes, the difference of the feelings that you had, right? I mean, am, am I right there? You yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yep. And all great change comes with some pain. But yeah. the pain, the pain of remaining the same, to me just became greater than the pain of the change. And so I was ready. And, you know, if you think about me being a school teacher, too, with that steady income, yeah. but the pain of staying there finally just became so great. I was willing to risk even going on welfare. The pain of the change was now less than the pain of remaining the same. And that's me too. When I just woke up at like 50 years old and was like, I'm not fulfilled. Yeah. And how many good years do I have left? You know, so the pain of remaining the same just drove me. 
to it. That's what happened. Yeah, that's what happened. You know, when Jason and I created our business, it's like he was always in sales and he was always perfectly fine with not knowing what that, you know, that income is going to be. Whereas I was always a W-9. I always had corporate overlords. Um, and I always knew exactly what I was going to make every month or every week. And I had a budget and you know what I mean? And so when we decided to just jump into this business, I was terrified <laughs> because we had no idea, but it just happened. It just worked out because we knew it's what we wanted to do. And we had a vision of what we wanted to, wanted to accomplish. We jumped in, even though we were terrified, right? So yeah. you know, it's the same. It's, it, I don't think it matters how old you are really. I mean, I, I don't say how old, um, I, I say level up, you know, I am level 23. So, um, you know, On I, level half a century. <laughs> I, it's, it's you, right. I mean, literally we're just getting better. So uh, yeah. I think that's pretty awesome. So talk to me about the lines we draw. You wrote that, correct? Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's another thing. Like I had been wanting to write that book for decades and it bothered me constantly that I had not done it. I, I felt like it was something I was supposed to do. It was information I had that a lot of women don't have and they needed. And I worked with mainly women, but well, I worked with all women in my network marketing career. And I just became more and more and more alarmed at how few people, especially women, know how to set healthy boundaries and what it was doing to their lives. And finally, I did it. I came across a fantastic book coach, Caitlin Founder for me, actually. Caitlin, a founder through photography, and Caitlin does photography. She did the all, she did some author headshots for our book coach and came home and was like, Mom, I found a woman that will help you write your book. And <laughs> she's she, like, like multi talented. She can, she can do it all. <laughs> she's a gift. Yeah, she's a gift for sure. Um, but yeah, so I wrote that book and I'm not doing it for profit. And Caitlin wrote a book as well through the same book coach, and we are giving them away for free. But I am a former people pleaser, and I still am. I think you always are recovering when you're a, a people pleaser. I, I, I think that... Do you uh, recover from that, though? And no, you just are always recovering, you know? Yeah. And so <laughs> these are just really, pr really practical ways of saying no, setting boundaries, doing it kindly, you know, um, just, it's just a little book, a little easy read. And I'm just so, I'm just so pleased I, I got it out. I can sleep at night now, you know, because it's out there. I did, I did it. So would you mind giving us maybe a couple of tips or, you know, some things that are in your book that, you know, may want us to read more? I, yeah, absolutely. I All think right. that, I think that the, um, the first thing people need to know when they want to start setting boundaries is that you need to create a bill of rights for yourself, a personal bill of rights. So your boundaries are your rules, the rules you have for yourself that you would like people to abide by if they want to be in your life. So those are your boundaries. They're kind of like rings around yourself or fences that, you know, people need to abide by. So for instance, um, I cannot tolerate very well people raising their voice at me when we're having a disagree. I don't mind like debating or even talking to someone who is disagreeing with me because I, I like to hear, you know, all sides and I like to acknowledge that I might not always be right. But if a person that I'm disagreeing with starts to raise their voice because of the some experiences in my past, like in my childhood, I will panic and flee. And so I have a rule that if you're going to be in my life, Erica, um, you're not going to ever be yelling at me. And then, you know, and I would say now, Erica, is that a boundary that, that, that you think is reasonable and that you can abide by? And you'll be like, yeah, I don't need to yell at you ever, especially now that I know you're sensitive to that. It'd be easy for me to not do that. And I'll say, okay, Erica, then you, you come on into my circle. You can come on into my circle. So um, you get to determine what your bill of rights is. And it's going to be different for every person, just like how we're all allergic to different foods. We're also, some of us are allergic to certain behaviors, but we have to let people know or they don't know. 
you can't just eat a sandwich that's made of peanut butter if it's going to throw you into anaphylactic shock and expect a person to know what you're allergic to, mm -hmm. right? So people don't know what you do and don't like and what you, what you need and what you don't need unless you just let them know. But most women don't even know themselves. Okay. They don't even know themselves. So a bill of rights might have on it, um, it might have on it, I have the right to feel safe. I have the right to feel safe. So then if something is making you feel unsafe, then you get to speak up and let the person know this, this, you're scaring me. Or when you do this, I feel unsafe. Or, you know, so I have the right to feel safe. I have the right to say no if the request is makes me uncomfortable. And that's really the only reason I need. So I have the right to say no if I'm uncomfortable saying yes. I have the right to choose who I spend my time with. And I don't have to spend equal time with equal people. I could have two friends. And if one of them is saying, well, you went to lunch with so-and-so this week, so now you have to go to lunch with me. No, I have the right to choose how I spend my time and who I spend it with. I have the right to not participate in secondhand conversations. So like if you came to me, you said, hey, um, what um, Mark told me that he really didn't like it when you said blah 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 then I can say oh you know what Erica I have this rule for myself I don't participate in secondhand conversations so um, Mark will have to come directly to me until he does I'm going to act like I never heard that okay yeah. so so these are your rights and how how you make your rights is pretty much look around at all the stuff you allow that you regret allowing and that is how you're going to make your Bill of Rights. The w things people do that you don't like, things you allow, times when you said yes and you wished you had said no. And that's how you create your Bill of Rights. Now, the book is had to be under 100 pages because people nowadays, they won't read self-help books if they can't read them in 90 minutes or less. And mm -hmm. they have to be under 100 pages. So literally, my section on creating a Bill of Rights, which is so important, was so short. I did create a whole course on it um, outside the book and it is also free and um, you can find a link to that at deardreamer.com as well deardreamer.com that's where you can get your free copy of your book there and then we are fleshing out things that people might need to know more about that we couldn't fit in the book so we'll be that little site will just keep growing we get so much joy I was telling Caitlin, I'm like, we know things. And she's like, we do know things. And that, and, and I'm like, we are all our, <laughs> yeah, we can to tell everyone. We, we can see to tell everyone. So yeah, that, that's where we're collecting all the things that we know <laughs> that people might need. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Always want to provide a service. Doesn't matter yeah. what it is. Always want to do something for the benefit of others. Overly helpful. That's what we are. Yeah, that's our superpower. Super overly helpful. <laughs> So, you know, we, we did talk to your daughter already, Caitlin. So let's, uh, I want to ask you, how do you collaborate with her as a co-founder, co-host, co-coach, co-everything in my life right now? Like, yeah. how, how does that work with you two? Oh my gosh. So Caitlin is a severe introvert and um, I am a severe extrovert. So. Okay. That actually is is nice because there are things about the business that I want to handle and the things that I want to handle are not the things that she wants to handle. And so we work very well together. Her strengths are generally my weaknesses and vice versa. And it's pretty easy when there's a task. We pretty much know whose wheelhouse that task falls into. And so um, also, oh man, she's so lovely. She's just so lovely. If if we ever have an issue between us, I'm going to tell you right now. We haven't yet, but I'll tell you right now, Erica, it will have been my fault. Okay, if anything ever, <laughs> because she, I mean, anybody that has the privilege of being in that girl's life, I mean, she's amazing. You probably don't even want to include this in the podcast because this isn't about Caitlin. I think it isn't about Caitlin. But, but she, no, I think, I think it is, though. I think it should be included because here it is. If you want to be an entrepreneur, you, you're going to have people who have your back, right? You have to. Yep. 
And you, you, don't to, you don't want to do it alone. You need to yeah. use re- your resources and your relationships. And so Absolutely. what happened What happened was Caitlin was being treated terribly. She was thought she was going to be an architect and she was being, being treated terribly at work. And it was breaking my heart. And I am a very powerful, like, can-do woman. Like, I feel like for my kids, I can do anything to support them. And so I'm like, all right, I need to move away from this network marketing business anyway. She needs to move away from that job because you can't stay places where you're not appreciated. And so I I started doing this like real estate investing um, just as a way to at least provide enough money to pull Caitlin away from that job. And it wasn't very much because she was just a drafter. She was still in college. It was a couple thousand dollars a month. And I closed like one deal put that money in the bank and then went to Caitlin and said, I can pay you for a year. Come help me build dear dreamer. Come help me build this thing, you know? So, but when Caitlin came on to this other company with me, um, this real estate venture, my income went from 43,000 the first year to 250,000 the second year. I just having Caitlin run the back end of things. I know, isn't that amazing? And so, so what was the change? Like what? I mean, that's amazing. So she does all the things that I don't like to do. She okay. likes it. Is the answer. All the research, the office, all of the, yeah, all of the, just all the yucky stuff. And she doesn't want to call people and talk to people. I'm great at closing deals and gating trust because I am honest and I'm personable. And I just want to be working with the people. And Caitlin doesn't. So she does all of that. So how we collapse. So that's, that happened. And that happened, me just trying to rescue both of us from unhappy career choices, basically. I love it. I and love then it. collaborating. Well, we just, it's easy to sleep all day. I, I, my baby is 16 years old now. And he, he goes to school where his dad works. So his dad gets him up. He gets him up and they're gone. Like I could sleep until like 5 p.m. when they come back and nobody would know. And, and so Caitlin and I were having this issue of just sleeping the day away once she quit her job. (laughs) I'm like, because if her baby slept, like, you know, if her baby slept in, she just slept in, you know, or you got to do it when you can do it. Yeah. And he was having like morning naps. So she was having morning naps, you know, and yeah, why not? But we were getting nothing done. And so really, that's surprising. I know, right? uh, You can (laughs) I don't know why. Yeah. What a thunk. <laughs> so we started walking in the mornings together. That at start at seven. So we usually end up going sometime before eight because I have a hard time sticking to an exact schedule. But um, we but go at seven, but we're out sometime by eight. I like eight. eight. Yeah. <laughs> and then all of our collaboration happens during our walks, all of it. So we walk for about an hour and we just talk about you know, both businesses that we're running together, what needs to happen next, um, any information she has or any information that I have. And, you know, today she made me, she's like, mom, they're going to ask you who your most innovated entrepreneur <laughs> today. And I was like, oh yeah, I think I did see some questions. Oh, because I'm a right-brained person. So I, I skimmed the questions and I was like, oh yeah, I got this. I got this, you know? Yeah, I'm good. And then I'm like, oh no, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, she's always like keeping me like <laughs> keeping me on track. And- I love that so much. <laughs> so, I usually come up with like the big ideas, like the big picture, and and then Caitlin helps me put it all into play. She's uh-huh. been such a, a such a blessing to me. I mean, who knew that I would make this thing that would just grow up to be like my biggest supporter and my biggest help? You know, I just admire her so much. So yes, that's how we collaborate during morning walks. It's an now that is probably the best team meeting anybody can ever have. (laughs) On Fridays we have a company we have a company wide Friday fun day, so we don't work and it's it's a company of two, so the whole company gets to do. You know, yeah, we we go every Friday and we don't talk business. We just go shopping or go to lunch or go scout out locations for our next company retreat. Up to yeah, so. <laughs> life by design. I mean, but you've done it. You've you've, you've manifested the life that you want. Yes. Okay, so going back 
then this might be a little bit of a, a sensitive question or not. But you know, how how does childhood trauma influence our entrepreneurial mindset and actions as adults? Um, well, I can only speak for myself, right? But I would say that I grew up in a household of um, drug addicts. Not my parent. Not my parents. They were. They tried to be very good parents, but they had a really difficult time disciplining, protecting, you know, and um, they did figure it out to their credit. They just kept trying until they figured it out. But I had some rough years as a as a kid. These siblings were older than me. And um, what it has done to me, I will tell you, first of all, my parents spent tens of thousands of dollars putting my brothers through private drug rehabs because the state ones really were not worth it. And it did help and it did make a difference, but it made us extremely poor. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I could tell you very interesting stories about how poor we were, but we're not going to worry about we'll that. that. We'll do that another, yeah, we'll another day. Another day. Another day. Yeah. Another day. Yeah. I mean, we another. <laughs> so, so I have this fear of being poor. I mean, I have this fear of being out of money. And so I have always been very solvent. My husband calls me a cash cow. I mean, I can figure out how to make big money all the time, but I'm still living in fear of being broke. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it, it sometimes can stop you from enjoying and appreciating what you have because I'm always like, just I'm just worried about being poor. I have major safety issues. There's just some places that I won't travel. My family thinks they're crazy because I saw something or read something and now I can't, I can't get it out of my mind. Yeah. So definitely safety issues. But I would say trauma also probably for anyone makes it very hard for me to let people in. So I've got some major like walls around me. So I have a lot of friendly associates. I, I had to couch surf as soon as I could start driving. I had to couch surf to live and I had to ingratiate myself. So I had to learn to be incredibly um, kind and charismatic and good and fun and nice, you know, because I needed people to let me, to want me to sleep on their couch, like parents during school weeks, you know what I mean? And like, I, I think of, I would, I mean, I, I would let any kid come sleep on my couch that needed it because of the way I lived. But most parents are like, no, not on a school night. We're not going to have a sleep on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I needed them to love me so much that they would feed me and house me like during the week. My parents made me come home to go to church, which was probably a good idea. But um, and I got my clothes washed and headed right back out. So I'm very I, I'm very friendly and outgoing and charismatic and confident. And I have a lot of friendly associates, but I don't have very many friends, like close okay. friends. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. So because of, I, I cannot let other people have power and control over me because of, of the trauma. Fin finally escaping that. Yes. In any way, in any way. So like one time I was looking at a podcast and they were like, you can come on our podcast, but you have to sell like five tickets to our upcoming event for us to let you on our podcast. And that felt like control to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I told Caitlin, I'm out. And she's like, mom, you have like 5,000 friends on Facebook. You could get five people to buy a ticket. And I'm like, I know, but I, I'm out because I can't have other people telling me that I have to do things. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So absolutely. I 100% agree with you. It makes a nine to five kind of hard when you don't want to be a answering to anybody about anything. So so it sounds like for you, you, the trauma actually developed you into the the extrovert that makes you so good at what you do, um, right. and it and it sounds like it pushed you to to become the entrepreneur that you are today. So I mean, that's what I'm hearing is that it, well, thank it, you for saying that. Thank you for saying that. And actually, that makes me think of the phrase that you know all all of our trials will be for our good, right? Thank yeah. you. Yeah. No problem. No problem. I'm just very impressed. I'm just so impressed by you. Um, all right. So what advice or tips would you give to women who want to pursue their dreams and live their best life? All right. So you've got to have a dream, first of all, because how are you going to make a dream come true if you don't have a dream? That's for South Pacific. I can't take credit for that. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, 
people are not dreaming enough. You've got to stop thinking about what you don't like about your life. You have to stop thinking about your current trials, your current lack of income, your current problems in your relationships, you know, your house that you hate, your car that keeps breaking down. You have to stop identifying the problem over and over and over again because what you focus on will grow and your mind is extremely powerful not your brain not the physical part of your body but the mind the thing that you actually are inside it is extremely powerful if you will give it a direction it will figure everything out for you and it will believe you can achieve yes yep so see it or conceive it Mm -hmm. then believe it and then you will achieve it. So instead, how about spend a little bit of time every day daydreaming about what you would do if you could. So start daydreaming about how would you like your life to be? Where do you want to live? What do you want to drive? How do you want that relationship to be? Um, You know, what kind of clothes do you want to wear? What kind of furniture do you want to have? Where do you want to travel to? Anything that excites you. How about go to that place in your mind daily. Give yourself a break from the anxiety and the pain and the grind of your life. Give yourself a break for just a few minutes every day. What you're doing is you're building a very detailed roadmap for your mind so that it can take you there. So so you will, you will not need self-discipline. Yes. You will not need motivation. When you are properly inspiring yourself, you will appear disciplined and you will appear motivated. But actually, all you're doing is thinking about what you want. Thinking about what you You want. And that doesn't just apply to women, everybody. So whoever's listening, that doesn't just apply to women. I want you to rewind about two minutes. And I want you to listen to what she's saying here because it's true. Your mind can create anything. So rewind, listen to it again. Not just for women, but, you know, it's appreciated. Um, All right. And the last most important question. Who do you think is the most innovative entrepreneur? in American history and why. Thank you. The one question I prepared for. Thank you very much, Erica. <laughs> very prepared, so we're all good. I was telling Caitlin, I'm like, she's like, Mom, did you read the questions? Do you have your answers? Because, you know, an introvert is like very, 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 very. And I'm like, Caitlin, I have been self-employed for 30 years. Like, there's nothing they're going to ask me that I, I can't just talk about, you know? So anyway, um, thank you for asking. I did. I thought about it and... I'm going to pick um, Joanne Rowling, but we know her as J.K. Rowling, who wrote the Harry Potter series. My and yeah, I ha- I was I was thinking about it because I love writing. I I am actually writing a children's book in the same genre that sh- that she is. So it's not a self help book. Um, I had to get the self help books out of the way because my mind was like those are important. But yeah, my I, my creative outlet is writing. And her story was so inspiring to me that when I read it, she was on welfare in Edinburgh, writing her stories in cafes and with her baby in a little pram, like a little baby carrier. And she was writing them and she she hopped from cafe to cafe all day long on welfare, writing these these books. And she got turned down 12 times. 12, 12 publishers turned her down and she had to she had to give her book to a complete unknown tiny little publishing house um, in England and it took off like crazy and so then Scholastic gave her a deal in America and she got enough of an advance from them to go buy a brand new home. She's just absolutely amazing to me. That true rags to riches story and show, showing you Um, Because she said all she could ever do was think about being a writer. Think about being a writer. Think about being a writer. So it goes back to what we said before. She could have been like, oh, my gosh, I'm absolutely broke. I'm a single mom. Um, People are breaking into my house every week. Like she would have people breaking in and stealing stuff. She was completely unsafe. Yeah. I mean, not enough money to live on. She had her office had to be cafes where she might be able to afford a cup of coffee so she could use their table, you know, like. But she constantly thought about where she wanted to be, not where she was. Because you've got to look in the direction that you want to go, not behind. 
And they like when you're driving a car, if you're trying to look at the road right in front of you, you're going to miss. You're going to rear end somebody. You know, you have to be looking far ahead of. Um, well, it's three cars ahead, right? <laughs> that's yeah, what I said. three cars ahead. Three cars ahead. <laughs> that's what she did. She was always thinking three cars ahead. Yeah. So she is my favorite. And I'm very, about- very happy you said that because um, I'm a huge Terry Potter fan, which is oh, kind of. Oh, I am too. I am oh, yeah, girl. I've got. We, we can have this conversation offline, but yeah, I'm a bit of a dork and that's okay because I love it and I love who I am. Wanted to go back one thing about J.K. Rowling's. Here's the thing about being um, rejected, right? I heard this on a podcast the other day. Rejection is God's protection. Yeah. Right? Yeah. She was meant to be where she was. And she meant to be where she was. Because and that was all planned ahead. He had it all planned for her. She just had to find, get the plan. Yeah. And you know, another thing, talking about how women have challenges um, that sometimes men don't have, they made her, some, some editor was like, I don't think boys will read a book written by a woman. So we need to mascul- make your name more masculine. So they made her choose the pen name of J.K. Rowling. She doesn't even have a middle name. So she picked her grandmother, K for Catherine, which is her grandmother's name. And do you think they would have ever said to a man, we don't think that girls will read a book written by a man. That would never occur to anyone. I don't think and so. she said that's one of her biggest regrets is that she didn't stand up for herself and just write under her own name instead of that, that pen name. I was thinking about that today and I'm like, oh, I just love her. I love That's her. We need to learn. empower women. We need to empower the women yep. um, around us so that they can stand up for themselves. Um, and it's, it's important. It's important. It important. Um, do you want to know what your daughter said? What'd she say? She said, you. She said, you are the most innovative entrepreneur that she's that she could think of. Oh, my gosh. OK. Are you, is your goal to make me cry? Yeah, no, I just wanted to share with you the impact you have had on her. Um, when when you hear her podcast, you you got to listen to the end. So I'll just that tell you so, that. That is you so can cry. You can cry then. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. You're good. Yeah. That is yeah. the sweetest thing. Oh, my gosh. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm fulfilled as a mother, right? I mean, yeah. what, what, what other compliment could your kid give you? And I don't really view myself as an innovative entrepreneur, so that's really amazing. Yeah, let's say that. I had to say, I think it. Uh, it you're, you. you're as a mother, your heart will you will be fulfilled in in all of your life just by listening to what she said about you. So she's a gift. Thank you. Thanks for sharing that. <laughs> all right. So where can people find you? Let's end there. Yep, they can find us at deardreamer.com. Super easy, and you can learn everything. You can get. Um, all of the materials we create are free and you can learn about the retreats. Um, go there and see what you need. And we hope that you're blessed by it. That's our, our greatest desire. Well, thank you so much for your time. This has been so much fun. I've really enjoyed talking to you. Me too, and, Eric. Uh, I'm really so that we will keep in touch. All right. Yes. I love right. it. I love it. All right. Thank you so much. You. Wow. What a great episode. I hope you had as much fun as I did. If you want more of this goodness, make sure you subscribe so that you get notifications for future podcasts. And if you found value from this, please share it with others. You can visit our website at cwgdigital.com. This is Erica Bailey. I am your host, and I will see you next time.